Hey hey, so let's continue making an automated telegraph pole system. So this is a mock-up of what I'm aiming for, kinda. So here is the telegraph pole end we made last time. And here is a middle piece I made using similar principles. Slightly tweaked the material, it still looks terrible. Um, be nice to have some sort of specularity or glossiness visible, but uh, as a 4.19 in the UE, I don't think that's uh, possible. Anyway, without hacking things as I've done in a previous tutorial, I am rambling. Let's move on. So I've put up some cable actors um, and also what's possible and what happens in real life is that these wires can cross the street and here is a terminating piece which is flipped two ways um, flipped that way horizontally and also flipped so it goes the other side of the road and I'd like a system that will automatically wire up these sort of things I've got a spare cable coming off one of these this is what happens a lot um, so you've got a lot of stuff going on across the street which adds to sort of the realism and the 3D effect of the facade, which is pretty much 2D. Um, so there you go. So that's how I'd like it to be. There was a mock-up, and I've prepared a few drawings. So this is that in overview, where we have a first telegraph pole, uh, one way, one or more middle pieces, and then another terminating piece there, which is flipped. Um, and I've got five separate isolators, insulators, whatever, uh, which I'm naming A, B, C, D, and E for clarity-ish. And um, I envisage that some of these may be present or not present. Uh, normally all five are present, it seems, in real life, but it'd be nice to be able to turn them off. Um, it'd also be nice to be able to change the materials and tension for each of them separately which is finesse really. Extra things, sometimes there'll be things coming off the bottom, going down to some sort of terminating box or going down on a long, maybe to a light or some other point. Um, it'd be nice to be able to have some flexibility in adding those in to also make it a bit less uniform and a bit more visually interesting and to fit in better with the particular house it's attached to. And sometimes it'd be nice to have cables coming off random points going across the street or just otherwise coming down um, again that's realistic and that's uh, it's nice in various ways. So that's what I want to get which I've shown you just now in the mock-up and now I need to break this down into units that can be turned into blueprints or code or other programming bits so conceptually breaking this down we have a pole item links representing the cables between them another pole item, more links and a pole, and as many poles as there are, there will be one less set of links. Uh, it's fairly obvious, but sometimes it needs to be spelt out. Um, and I'm also finalising the terminology here, um, because these are going to be turned into sort of code units or blueprints. So the pole is the telegraph pole, the links I've covered, attachments are things that are going to drop down and possibly stick up from the telegraph poles currently thinking one per pole, I mean that keeps it simple, it could be possibly expanded in future along similar lines to those I'm going to go on to, um, but for the sake of argument I'm going to have one data item and attachment uh, for each pole, and then separate to that there'll be cables coming off the poles. This might be done entirely separately or manually, um, that's probably how it's going to go, but anyway at this stage that's another thing, a cable is sort of a loose cable originating from a pole in our system but not ending up there. And here is the data that's in the system. So we have the pole network is the overarching class or entity which has n poles and n minus one links. Uh, each pole has a location um, which may be just specified uh, or is defined by the spline curve. So the spline points on the spline curve may cor uh, if the spline curve is being used, will correspond to the locations of each pole and the number of spline points is equal to n. Uh, so for each pole you have the location, you have five attachment points 
for the wires. This could be an arbitrary number, but for simplicity I'm making it 5. Not all have to be used. And the static mesh to be associated with the pole, which currently is either the end mesh or the mid mesh. Um, and a static mesh reference for any attachment. Uh, and this will be relative to some kind of center, so it can either go above, below, whatever, in a fairly uh, general fashion. And if between each pole, between each set of poles, there is a links set of data. This is, uh, with hindsight, what's going to cause me a lot of problems. Um, the basic information is whether there's a cable present or not. So that's a Boolean. Um, so it could be yes, 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 no, yes, if the fourth one down is missing, kind of thing. Um, it would be nice, but not essential, to specify for each link the material used, the tiling, that is to say how much the material stretched, uh, the width of the cable, and the cable length. Now, a lot of these things depend on other things, um, and any extra cables that might be coming off this are probably going to be a separate manually set entity. I can live with that. Um, so if I just jump to here, um, it kind of simplifies a bit in that the static mesh that you use for the pole, the attachment points are specified, the sockets I should say, are specified for a mesh, so um, in a minute we're going to set those up, but basically if we set five sockets in a standardised fashion for all the meshes we are going to use as poles, then we don't need to store any attachment information in the pole entity itself, that's just implied by the static mesh that we're using. That will hopefully be clearer later. Um, and just to illustrate these things, the tiling uh, will depend on the material. Uh, some materials have different scaling and proportions. And the tiling also depends on the length of the cable. A longer cable means it's more stretched. I don't know why they set it up this way, but they did. And so uh, that value will depend on that and that. And the length itself will depend on the distance between poles, which is determined by looking at their respective locations and finding the difference of that and the magnitude of that to find the distance. Uh, and so I'm proposing to have a cable tension value, which basically means that by appropriate multiplying, dividing, whatever, um, of the distance between poles, um, it will get a standardised dip so that the standard tension can be just left B. Um, so the length, so the the length will depend on the tension and the distance and so on and so forth. So it's all a bit interconnected. Um, in brief, three different methods of doing this. This is the one I thought I would start off with. Um, spoiler: I went ahead and I'm re-recording this because it turned out to be not so good. Um, spline curve component, <coughs> or rather a spline component of blueprints allows you to draw an arbitrary sort of line and you can define sort of inflection points on it, spline points, and the idea is that these define where the poles are go and then the poles are just simply drawn at the points and if you add another point the, the pole will turn into a an end point and the one that was an end point will turn into a midpoint and the wires will just connect between the points and will ignore the actual shape of the curve. Um, this is the most automated way of doing it, the most sort of Unreal Engine way of doing it. Uh, but as I found out, it, there are some complexities. Uh, when you add and remove points, it makes it a little bit difficult to capture the links data in particular. Um, let's say you add a point there. Um, the difficulty comes in where you update this and how you update this, uh, as most things are convenient to do in the construction script. Um, I was creating a blueprint object for each pole and long story short it's difficult to spawn new kinds of objects in the construction script but that's a logical place to do some of this stuff uh, so I will um, probably ditch this idea neat as it would otherwise have been but I'll show you an example of it half working without the links hopefully. Another method is to have a sort of overarching actor which tracks everything, perhaps not necessary, come to think of it. Um, so you have an existing setup, setup here, <coughs> quite how you get that's another matter. Uh, you have some kind of create new pole action, maybe it's a button on the, the network actor or on the pole actor, and uh, 
Anyway, there's a function that you somehow call which will add a poll to the end of your existing setup and you then move that into place. So it might make it a meter away by default and then you adjust it, put it where it needs to be. Um, and a variant of that is just to have no overarching repository of data, no overarching network blueprint, just to have individual poll actors which um, can be created as needed and each poll actor has data providing a link to the next poll actor in the chain and data describing the links whether they're present or not and so on. And this is uh, a bit more unwieldy, less automated uh, but probably the simplest data structure as uh, you just have everything self-contained with a reference to the next thing and that should hopefully work. So I think that's probably the way I'm going to do it, but let me just uh, go to the blueprints and show you the spline curve example as far as I could get it without it getting complicated. And maybe there's a simple solution to this, but uh, it's becoming a bit of a headache due to creating instances of blueprints within very intimate bits of code for another blueprint. It's just an inherently difficult situation, which uh, just it got a bit nasty. And I, I'm not a code warrior, so I, I can't solve it very easily. Anyway over to blueprints. Uh, what I need to do is to define sockets on my telegraph poles. So here's how you do it on this, that's my starting one. Create socket and uh, be useful if it wasn't there, but there we go. And I think what I need to do <coughs> is create a unified naming system and then it should all flow from there. And if I get this position correctly, I can just copy it up and down. This is something I find quite hard is to judge where to put these sockets. It's a little bit... well, I suppose I can go to top. Way what's going on here? Oh, and now it's uh, locking. So that's pretty much it. Let's go to side. OK, this is quite easy now, actually. It's just perspective is fooling me. So we're going to call this one something really uh, exciting like um, wire socket C. Well, we're calling it A to E, so let's be consistent. Um, can I copy that? I doubt it. OK, but I can copy this stuff. Is that A to E? Minus 5.8. Okay, so I'm just going to manually put those values in. Create socket. Uh, was that minor? 18. Uh, what do I call it? Wire socket. So let's go to left. Time lapse while I sort this out, I think. Okay, so that's one of them done. And to do the other one, bing. Right, and now, properly to the blueprints, I have made, uh, that's, forget that, that's dud, I have made a pole network uh, actor, blueprint rather, which, uh, oh, that sort of works, um, which has a spline as the only component really, um, and I've got some 
variables. I've got a list of pole actors, which is in fact a list of static mesh components. And I've got a default end pole and a default mid pole variable saying what static meshes to use. Um, this could be. Uh, so this is basically a full start with this blueprint. I'll show you what I've got so far, um, but this could be extended to allow you to uh, individually select a static mesh for each component rather than have default ones applied. So um, the construction script is where it's happening. So this is called every time the object is updated as well as created. And we'll see the effect of that. First of all, um, this is sort of standard processing for any of the spline curve actors that do roads or walls or things. This is a similar process. Here um, I'm clearing that list of static mesh components. Um, each entry in that list is going to be a telegraph pole. I'm not worrying about the links yet, the cables. Um, so there's the spline and first of all I'm seeing how many points there are in there the uh, default is 2 when it's first created. So just um, as a precaution I'm making sure there's more than 0 points. If true we'll start working through each of them. I am going from 0 to the number of points minus 1. So if there's 2 points I'm going from 0 to 1. That just gives the right index. Um, all these things start at 0 usually. Um, and I am using that reference to the spline point to get the location, rotation and scale at each of the points and I'm using that to add a static mesh component at that location, rotation and scale um, which means that you can use the standard editing of the spline to change the rotation of all of the things uh, and so on um, so it adds the mesh static mesh component and then there is a bit of processing to choose the correct static mesh. I'm just going to what am I going to do? Make that a comment so it's easy. Select appropriate static mesh. Uh, and this basically says that if this is the index, if we're on the first um, the first one, or if we're on the last one, as that one is the final loop value, first or last means that you select the end pole, essentially, and then that's set as the static mesh for the static mesh component of this blueprint. And uh, secondly, it then works out if it is the last uh, object, if it is, it flips it. So it gets the relative scale and flips the Y and that may or may not work, hard to tell. Let's compile it. So if we drag this on to our map we have a funny thing here. So the first thing to note is that these are 90 degrees off what they should be. But you can move that around and you see that they follow the, the uh, spline curve. Now that's so um, I think that has flipped it correctly, were they to be 90 degrees off. Um, now this can be fixed by going to the models and simply rotating them by 90 degrees. Uh, so let me just see if I can do that. I want to change everything 90 degrees. So let's see what happens if I export that and re-import that. That's the quick and easy fix. I could manually change the rotations but uh, experience tells me that's a blimmin' nightmare. You get some very odd effects and uh, gimbal locks and all this and that if you're trying to change the local rotations of things. I have found. So uh, let's find the end so, well, um, that's better. So, I know that the first one works. And 
if we go back to the blueprint and maybe we change the X and it maybe this works in some cases but not others so this might just fail but let's see what happens now that seems to have worked so you can see that's flipped and now what happens when we add a point well let's just get this sorted out first so can I say no, let's offset that for some reason I'm offset that and let me just check on yeah I think I'll be that I can set it on I've got to say it's also here right I'm going to re-import that I'm going to re-import that so moment of truth I'm going to make a new point by holding alt down and I think that basically worked. So there's no wires yet, but those are all positioned as they should be. So that's quite handy. I don't know actually if this is going to work to take it across the road. But it's quite nice that it does do that automatically. So I think now we can rotate these, but I don't think it works in the way I want it to, because yes that fixes that, but you have all these problems. Yeah, so I don't think the spline curve method is very good for that kind of transition. Um, there we go. So I could, if I wanted to assume that all the links were there all the time, I could probably add the cable actors. Let's just do that. If it'll let me. Well, so what I want to do at this point, now I've made the pole is create the um, links. I might do this. Uh, how to do this? I think I'll do it in a second loop. So when that's completed. Um, Is there more than one pole? So I'm not going to worry about tidiness at the moment. Is there more than one pole? If so, do a loop. First index zero, last index. Um, this minus two. Oops, not twelve. So if we have two poles, it goes from zero to zero, so it does it once. Okay, loop body. So we have this array. Let's bring it in again here. It's a bit less confusing. And we want to get uh, a copy at the index. And we want to get the next one. Is one that is another 
Oh, it's horrible. So basically we're putting wires between those two things in the loop body. Uh, quite easy to get confused here. Uh, uh, right, so now the question is can I, is there such a thing as a cable actor? Ooh. Component. Um, mm, well, I think that's what I want. I'm not going to bother to save it, but just as a test, I'll do one between each pole. Relative transform. I'm going to need that. So, that's the original pole, that's the start. Get world transform. I think. Oh, but I don't want that. I want the attachment point. Get socket location. I don't care about the rotation or the scale in socket name. Oh, socket name. Is that the tag? Or, no, try socket A. I should... Oh, what's the test? Okay, so that's failsafe. So that we can iterate through if we're doing all five of them. That creates a cable component. Uh, and we want to set something. Set attach end. Yes, attach the end. And so I need to get the socket location of the next one, the corresponding socket, and okay, let's uh, set end location. Ooh. I might need to do something with like that, but let's see if that works. We'll use the defaults. So, that didn't work. Target. Cable component. Let's just fix that. So apparently, that worked. Well, it's doing something. Yeah, it's not doing a good thing. So, well, that didn't really work, but it's doing something. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, there we go. So maybe, oh, oh, dear, oh dear. Uh, I'll debug that and get back to you. Right, on the good side, I've got it working, sort of, um, with the separate actor, yeah, horrible, wasn't it, for each pole. Um, so in theory, the work is kind of done. Pardon me. But in practice, uh, it's not good, because I've realised that all of these wires are essentially physics simulated, even when the game is running. So if I put one of these wires to very low tension, It's what I would say is spazzing out, excuse my language. Um, if I start playing the game, it starts doing proper physics simulations, and that's not really what I want. I mean, visually, um, but also performance wise, that's going to be hosing it. So 
uh, yeah, collision is off, but if collision was on, that they would also respond dynamically, which can be nice in some circumstances. If you've got wind, they'd sort of sway in the wind. But for my purposes, I don't want that level of um, fidelity. I don't want that much physics going on. So um, the whole approach is basically wrong because cable components are not what I want. I want something more static. Um, however, I think I can rework this to use basically a static mesh in between these to stretch the static mesh between the points and the static mesh would be a wire with a slight dip and you could scale the z-axis <coughs> depending on the tension and so on. So I can see a solution uh, but it's a pain in the ass, and it's not using the thing I wanted to use, which is the cable components. And the very nature of the cable components was why the spline setup wasn't working very well, because the cable components attached to a particular actor, uh, or a particular component of a particular actor, and then to a socket of that component. But the spline curves, it, it wasn't in that format, it was a different structure. It was a single actor with lots of different things inside it, uh, or spawned from it. So, um, uh, maybe I could have got it working, but uh, let's just turn that back. But it wasn't very good. But essentially, the features are there the wire width, you can change that to uh, whatever you want. Um, the tension, I've, it, it's not quite right, but it's an uh, approximation. Um, the material seems to work. Um, you can change that. You can change the settings for all of the. Uh, what is it? You can change the settings for all of the uh, poles at once just by selecting them all. Let's revert that change, and so on. Um, <clears throat> so, in this setup, you, each pole has wires attached going to the next pole, and you. Uh, I haven't sorted that out yet, but that shouldn't be too hard. Um, oh yeah, and simply you can say if the wires are, wires are present or not. Um, and you manually select the next pole in the list uh, and it's not robust if you select a different pole you change it or you delete one it uh, doesn't work very well so if for example I delete this one there you go that's not good but as soon as you update it it figures out what's going on um, this is partly because when you delete things in the editor you don't get any events. You don't get the delete event. You don't get the sorry destroy event. You don't get the end play event. Um, I don't know why this is. It's weird, but it means that this is a very unrobust system because you can't delete. You can't detect when things are deleted in it. Well, let me just run you through how it works anyway. So um, there's the actor. I'll just show you how to make a new one, in case you're wondering. So it's an actor class because it's in the level as a thing. Let's just call it uh, Pole Blueprint. I'm not going to keep it, just going to show how I do this. And the easiest way to get started is probably to find that static mesh uh, somewhere. Do, 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 do. Anyone will do. And just to drag it into the component view and to give it a generic name so it's less confusing so pole static mesh and that then automatically creates that component there which can be accessed from within the blueprint and uh, I don't know why it starts out that way but I'm going to drag that onto the default scene route so the mesh is now essentially the actor and uh, then I'll add a lot of variables like, for example, the cable widths, make that a visible property, and that'll be floats, and it'll be an array of floats, compile, and then you can set the defaults. So I could do this with a loop, but I'll just, for simplicity, have that defined. So it could be more elegant if you had an arbitrary number of attachment points and you do that um, within the blueprint but five is the number so that's what we've got and then you can repeat that for variables like cable is present make it visible make it an array of booleans 
and again you can just pop them out and say by default they're all present and so on. There are a few other things um, the main thing was uh, the next poll <coughs> so this is a somewhat flawed implementation as I discovered but uh, the way I did it was to have that's not an array that's a single variable and it is a reference to itself which in this case is the poll blueprint and if you compile that by default it will be blank and so where I had it was that if you then um, if we go back to the here if I go get my new blueprint and when you drag it out it is now that static mesh um, if I drag another one out that is now pole BP2 if I go back to this one I can then set the pole to link it to the next one and I had to do a bit of jiggery pokery to automatically put a link to the previous pole um, because you need to know whether there is a previous pole rather than what it necessarily is to determine whether or not the static mesh should be this intermediate piece or an end piece and whether it should be flipped so basically if there is a previous and a next pole make it an intermediate piece if it has a next pole but not a previous it is the end piece this way round and I think I haven't actually coded it up but if it is if it has a previous pole but not a next pole then it's going to be another end piece but flip around that way but I think in this case I just manually flipped it um, or didn't have to in fact so then you put in a bit of code if we come back to the blueprint so <coughs> it will have cables added to it when it has a next pole and to store those I had a list of cable components for housekeeping which doesn't have to be public um, and that is a type of variable it's an array of cable components references to and that's by default a blank list which uh, when I create a cable um, I stick them in there so they can be deleted easily if necessary um, and in the construction script this is called whenever you make the object or change a parameter of it or drag out drag things around a bit and so the first thing to do is a bit of uh, housekeeping just to clear that array at the beginning and then do things like if the next poll is valid I think this is the best way to do this it may not always work so if it's blank it's not valid if it's appointed to a thing it is valid and I'll make it a branch so that um, all the subsequent processing takes place only if to, to make the cables only if um, there is a valid next pole and if there is then you have a for loop not for each for some reason I can't find it there but for loop and there's five things five cables to make so 0 to 4 <coughs> could do 1 to 5 but the index uh, starts at 0 for computer programming stuff um, and in the loop body you can do things like I uh, can't remember cable add cable component so this adds a component of the blueprint which is this thing here which currently has a static mesh component you want to manually attach and the transform is the start of the pole and then you have to do things like get the socket of the mesh so uh, get socket location um, and we just want the location Ooh. what's that so I don't think anything else will really make a difference um, and the target is self, I have to think about this and that, that will so the socket name we have to then uh, find a way to do that we can hard code in socket A but if I then take you, I'll show you how I've done that in the actual blueprint and then you can do things like um, we want to 
add that to an array and the array is of course list of cable components so that adds the new cable component to our array so we can then read it back from the array if we need to access it later and uh, then you can do various things to set properties so you can set that it's attached at the end, you can set that it's attached at the start and you want to in particular set uh, so uh, set attach n2 and this I think you want to attach it, attach it to a socket on the static mesh of not this um, not this blueprint but the next one <coughs> and again I'm hard coding socket A but um, that'll be whatever socket it should be for each of the five iterations of the loop and the actor will be whatever what's ever in the next pole so that will attach the cable at one end to the socket of the present static mesh and at the other end it will attach it to the relevant socket of the next pole and um, that has to be valid of course but it is valid because we've already tested for that earlier on and there's a few other things you can do to, to tweak it but that's basically it and I'll jump to the actual blueprint that I've got working um, so my construction script construction script I'm doing some funny things testing to see if it's valid the next poll I'm doing a thing where I had to clutch it to tell the next poll that we are the previous poll and that it's not the first poll so it therefore helps it to choose the right mesh and then we update our own static mesh depending on whether we have a next or a previous poll and to update the mesh it's just a logic test um, is it the first poll and is the next poll are we attached to another pole and on the basis of that it either chooses an end mesh or a mid mesh and we manually flip it if we need to um, I've got a function to clear the mesh and to clear the next pole which should destroy the cable components uh, if it's called but um, in the editor as I said before you don't get an event if it's just deleted so this is never called it never works I don't know if it actually would work um, here's a function where it takes the for loop index from 0 to 4 and it hard codes in the socket names A to E and that's just a little macro which seemed to work fine so going back here um, it takes the loop index and turns it into the socket name and it does that where it's needed um, other than that um, I think I don't need to do that so we can ignore that but I had a few problems with relative and world locations. This is a hangover from when I was trying to make it work on the spline where it was problematic because you didn't have separate actors and uh, it just made it a bit tricky to work. <coughs> um, what else do I set? So I set the cable width, set the material, um, there's a bit of code to work out the appropriate cable length based on the tension and the distance between the two poles so that's the location of one, it's the location of the other, subtract the locations, get the vector length should give you the distance between the two um, so that's the cable length and then there's another fudge based on the width as well to set the tile material which is basically the scaling of the material on the surface and that's pretty much it I had added um, a little routine to detect when it was destroyed and then to clear all the stuff in this blueprint but also to clear it in the other ones and then destroy the cable components but it's never been called because it, while using the editor you don't get an event that's a bit uh, a bit finickety but that's basically it um, so it will automatically put in the right mesh but it's not fully automated things to add are to get the attachment mesh working which should be very very straightforward and um, and also now to replace these cable components entirely with a simple static mesh scaled between the two points with an appropriate z-axis transformation as well to get the appropriate amount of dip maybe I'll do a little one on that later but uh, that's more or less job done um, now unfortunately because of the way Unreal renders things when you're far away the wires 
which are a bit fatter than real, they disappear so you don't get quite the effect. But that's that's pretty good. Okay, bye then.